Today it's old school technology meeting new school technology coming together in the garden to save the user, the farmer, the dad a bunch of time so he can spend more time doing what he loves, although he loves this stuff too. Stay tuned for that coming up in this one. Even though I'm in California now, we're gonna go back to Indianapolis, Indiana because it's part two of touring Daniel Garcia's urban farm just outside the city of Indy. Today we're gonna to look at two pieces of technology that he's using on his farm. One old school one, pre-1950s, and one new one that's came about very recently. The goal with both of these is just to make his job farming easier. That allows him to do more, have more time to do other things and to just make his farming more efficient. We're gonna start by going old school and look at how he's using an old two-wheeled tractor in a modern context. You're using some new technology and some old technology. This is old technology with some newer components on it. What is it and what are you trying to do with it? So this is a uh, David Bradley two-wheel tractor, uh, really used in kind of through the Depression era and um, really kind of petered out uh, around the, the 60s. Um, but there's all different kinds of two-wheel tractors. A lot of them were designed off of a standard 15-inch uh, center row. This one I've modified to try to go over a 30-inch bed, mainly for cultivating. Um, there's there's tons of different attachments you can get. You can get tillers, you can get sickle bar mowers, you can get um, a lot of things, but I'm mainly trying to use this for cultivating. Um, and I started out using 30 inch bed system. A lot of people are using this, like I said, on 15 inch um, center uh, grid system. So I'm trying to figure out if I could, if I can somehow use this in my current setup, or if I will have to uh, do some sort of hybrid 15-inch uh, row um, or 30-inch uh, bed. What's system. the advantage of something like this over at BCS? Like, why a, a setup like this versus going with the BCS, which you see a lot of people using? Uh, two main things. The uh, first one is cost. A lot of these older tractors will go for a song. You can find them at auctions fairly cheaper. And uh, the, another main thing is the clearance from your crops. So a BCS has very little clearance uh, if you're trying to cultivate. There are some tools that you can use in order to cultivate. I've seen people put um, finger weeders on the back of a BCS on our early stage crops and I've also seen um, some stirrup hose uh, but that's that's for very very early stage crops. Uh, clearance on, on this two-wheel tractor is about, it looks to be about eight or nine inches. Um, some people have put larger tires and uh, there's even a, I guess a lift kit you could call it for, for some other types of tractors if you wanted to cultivate corn and other crops. But yeah, essentially it's a time-saving tool. Because really what you have here versus the BCS is you have this, this toolbar to work with in the background which you can put all your implements onto, yep. where a BCS you wouldn't. So you, there's things like syrup hose, finger weeders, all the different things you're experimenting with, all basically run off of this toolbar frame. Yes, and people are making their own toolbars, people are making their own tools. Um, uh, a lot of it's just knowledge that I'm getting off of uh, Facebook groups, there's a uh, gardening for market Facebook group. Um, there's a lot of guys on there that are that are using these regular basis. Um, there's Jason Weston. He's kind of the he's joked to be the godfather of two-wheel tractors. Um, there's uh, Rusty uh, Williams Stauffer out in Ohio. He's he's in a lot of the two-wheel tractors. He's kind of like a a Planet Junior uh, collector. Um, Jeff Lauber, he does a lot of, uh, he's out of Iowa, he does a lot of different kinds of tractors like Simplicity and, and uh, David Bradley, but mainly it's just kind of talking with these other farmers, utilizing the power of, of networking over the internet and figuring out how, how people are using these to cultivate their crops, what are the best times, um, 
how, how should you plant your seeds? How should you prepare your soil? How should you um, time your cultivation? And, and there's a lot of information that's floating out there that isn't really in a uh, a single text or document. It, it feel like it, it may be in like a few people mm -hmm. um, that that have uh, done a lot of the experimentation. One of the ways that Daniel's saving a lot of time on his farm is by using the paper pot transplanter. In this set of transplants right here, these are green beans. These are shelling beans. They're a special order for a chef client. And he's growing these in paper pots. They're two inch spacing paper pots. So the CP303 cell chain pots and he's doing them and these are big plants these are about seven inches tall if you measure them so you'd think you can't transplant something this big in paper pots they're just too big they're gonna be root bound but you can he's done it and I'm gonna show you how he does it next today you're transplanting some green beans using the paper pot transplanter or their two inch spacings you've done it before how did it work before and why are you doing it this way so last time we used the same tray um, same spacing, um, but we transplanted them a little later and they were very, very much taller and the, and the leaves were very, uh, a lot bigger and they seemed to catch a little bit, but when we planted another row of, of crops next to them, they seemed to get hung up on the, on the paper pot transplanter. So this time we're just going to plant, uh, these are 13 days old. It's amazing how fast a, a bean can grow. Um, and they're nice and stocky and the leaves are still small. And I think they'll do a lot better, mainly just due to their size. Doesn't seem like the roots have uh, really spread out or, or come through the, the holes in the bottom of the tray. So it looks like we're, we've got some good um, transplants to put in the ground. Let's give it a shot. Okay. I have to mess with the depth. The, the depth is controlled by the, the angle of how you're pulling. You just transplanted a whole roll of green beans using the transplanter. It took literally a few minutes. How big has this tool been for you and your context and your situation? So, um, the, the main thing is it gives us a little bit of time. Um, I, I remember this time last year, I was uh, getting uh, letters from the city because I didn't have time to mow my lawn and this year the the lawn has been mowed the neighbors are happy and I'm actually being able to spend a little more time with my family and not just being out in the, the garden all, all day uh, or all year um, so for example we planted 2,000 head of lettuce and 3,000 beets and a thousand radishes after a Saturday market day and it was going to rain that night which is why I wanted to get everything in and I said well we've got all that in it's going to rain let's just go uh, go to my mom's for two days and we actually got to spend some good quality family time. So thousands of plants in just a couple hours? Yeah and it would have taken us uh, at least a day or two to get all of that in the ground. Plus we were uh, a couple of weeks ahead of the, the weeds, so that really helps too. Kind of paying it forward, the time savings. I love this old school agricultural technology and equipment, stuff from the early 1900s through the 40s, from the non-mechanized Planet Junior wheel hose to the mechanized David Bradleys. They're really interesting pieces of equipment that were designed around small scale agriculture. I was once at a workshop where somebody said, back then we had it all figured out. And they were right, we forgot all of it though. We forgot it all in the agricultural revolution when farming went big and got away from small. But back then when there was a lot of small farms, small homesteads, there was all sorts of appropriate technology like this around. And since then, a lot of it's been lost. But one thing Daniel said that I love that's really wise is that that information is still trapped in the heads of a few individuals not in documents. So the more that this information can get out there, sharing it on videos like this, sharing it in Facebook groups, sharing it in documents, the better because a lot of times this old knowledge is in the heads of old people 
And when they die, the knowledge goes with it. So the more we can collaborate, get information like this out there, the better, because it's tools like this, even if they were made 50 years ago or they're made yesterday, it's the appropriate usage of those tools and the most effective usage of those tools that makes that info that makes those tools so valuable. It's not necessarily the equipment, it's how do you use it in the best way for this type of scale farming. That's one thing that we're really trying to do with the paper pot transplanter and paperpot.co is get a lot of the common usage out there around the paper pot transplanter shared and in the open. A lot of the usage for the paper pot transplanter right now is in the heads of individuals scattered throughout the country and throughout the world. It's not in one place or it's not consolidated. So every time somebody new picks it up, a lot of times they're starting from square zero, but it shouldn't have to be that way. There's been a lot of trial and error with it. There should be a basic understanding of how do you use this equipment. But there's really not that information out there, at least yet in an easily defined way. We're hoping to change that. Same thing with the David Bradleys and other old technology. It's out there, but you gotta hunt for it. So the more people like Daniel that can experiment with technology like this, merging the old and the new, the better it is for all of us. There you have it, farmer Daniel Garcia and some of the amazing technology that he's using on his farm to save time. After all, that's what it's all about. If you can get the same product out, if you can get the same quality of product out or better and save time doing it, it just means you have more time to do other things. To market that product, to sell that product, to deal with post-harvest processing, to get your head off the grindstone and just look up and see where are you at in this whole journey. When you're constantly on that hamster wheel of getting stuff done, it gets really hard to look ahead. These tools like this, the paper pot transplanter, two-wheel tractors, collinear hose, wheel hose, they all make small farmers' jobs a little bit easier so they can spend more time doing other stuff. One thing Daniel loves to do is spend time with his kids. These tools afford him time to do that. So he can plant a lot of plants really quickly with a paper pot, and it'll be interesting to see where he goes with the finger weeders on that David Bradley. If you want to learn more about the David Bradley, I highly suggest you go right here on YouTube, search Jason Weston. I've been watching some of his videos and I really want to get myself a two-wheel tractor now. The problem is they're really hard to find out here in California. So if you happen to have one and you're using one, I'd love to come visit and take a look at it. If you're in the state of California, leave a comment below or shoot me an email. But that's all for this one. I really want to thank Daniel for his generosity and taking some time to allow me to film this video. You can leave your props to him below. He actually took some time before he had to go to a Sunday farmer's market to allow me to come on and film this video. So that's the type of kindness that I typically find in this movement. I want to thank him a lot for allowing me to do it. It's really important to share knowledge like we're doing here in this space. If you want to learn more about Daniel, details below. If you want to learn more about two-wheel tractors, again, search here on YouTube. If you want to learn more about the Paper Pot Transplanter, I actually distribute those. You can learn more at paperpot.co. And if you want to learn more from small farmers like Daniel, I do a podcast every Wednesday, a brand new episode of Farm Small, Farm Smart, focusing on urban, peri-urban, small-scale market growers getting it done. So if you want to learn more, there's a link on that below as well. Lots of links down there. Check them out. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.